Now that you're a little bit more familiar with the Glyphs interface, let's take a look at setting up our masters. For us, we don't necessarily need to do too much with our masters because I imagine we'll design only one weight for this project. But we can find our masters information up here in this little I or tap command I for info. Right away we'll look and we'll see that we have a family, family name, units per M, version and creation date. All of this is pretty technical information. For now, we're going to start with a vanity name. I'm going to name mine after the course, so 250-MC font. That makes sense, right? Hopefully, you're a little bit more creative in your font naming than just a number and a bunch of dashes. Then, we can go to our Masters tab. Now, in our Masters table, we can see what these things are and we'll break them down individually. At the very top, we have a master name. Now this corresponds to a weight or a style. It defaults to regular, but we could set italic or bold or expanded or something like that. Glyphs is so nice that it even gives you an icon to reference with. It might be kind of hard to see my black on dark theme here, uh, but we can choose an icon to represent our master. We also have axis coordinates if we've set up axes for a variable font, which we're not doing in this course. And we have our metrics. These are the bones of what's going to happen and take place in our font. Now when we're looking at these, there should be familiar terms. We can set a baseline, which happens at zero. And we'll click back and forth between this to see what's going on. So if I go back to my font info panel with this capital A up, we'll take a look at this. So this baseline sits at zero right there, and the number next to it is negative 16. If we were to zoom in all the way here and count how many pixels there were between this thick line and the end of this variation, there will be 16 pixels there. Now those 16 pixels are this overshoot that we're planning for. By changing that number, we can change what our overshoot is. So if we change it to something like 50, for example, you can see that my character just changed over here on the side. The same is true if I'm thinking about my X height or my cap height, rather. If I want to lower cap height, something closer to my X height, I could change this to something like 600, and you can see my letter form move. Again, with my ascender, if I want my ascender to be much higher, I could say maybe something like 1200. And now I've got a huge ascender versus my cap height. Time for a quick break in the content to ask if you're enjoying what you're watching and seeing to please subscribe to the channel because that's the best way to support what's going on in this channel. If you're already subscribed, be sure to like the video, comment on it, and share it with somebody new. All right, back to the action. Now for us, I'll probably keep all of these relatively close to what they started as. So this one started at 800, but I want a little bit tighter one and 700. It also has overshoot. So this overshoot to me is generally pretty large. So I'm going to bring it down to something closer to 10 probably. And I'll change this for all of my overshoots. Now the baseline is a negative number, as is the descender. That means when we're looking at this number here, this is our sort of zero on an axis. Above is positive and below is negative. So that negative number puts our overshoot under that line. If it were positive 50 instead, our overshoot goes above that line, which isn't really helpful when we're thinking about what that line needs to do. So I'll change it back to negative, and we'll change it to the 10 that we're using. Same with our descender, we'll change it to negative 10. Now I can look at these things and decide if that's what I want going on. As I'm looking at this, maybe I want this to be a little bit tighter. I'm going to design a pretty low contrast font or set of fonts. And just like that, I have all the things I am looking for to be set up. Before I move on, however, I am going to look at my lowercase a. So I'm going to look at my lowercase and look at the difference between the x height and that ascender one more time as we pull up this font info panel. This will show me how my lowercase h might look, how big that stem is going to be. And I'm pretty pleased with those dimensions, that ratio. If you want to be more extreme, you can change that ascender, you can change that cap height to be whatever it is you want to be. Now, to be the most helpful that I can be in this course, 
I'm gonna go ahead and design in a sans serif and a serif version so we can talk about the differences between those. For my own organization, I'm gonna name this one sans serif. And then I'm gonna add a weight. So if I have this selected over here, I can choose to add this little plus and I'm gonna duplicate it because I want all the same measurements. So I'll duplicate this selected and you should have seen this pop up here, which is the duplicate, and also a new layer appear over here. So if I rename this second master now, I've got that second one selected, and I'll delete the sand so it'll become a serif. It might take a minute before this one updates, but over here it's already gone ahead and updated. And I'm even going to go and pick separate icons. So maybe I'll say my sand serif, and since I only have two, I'll pick this really extreme one and I'll pick a bold one down here so that we can really tell the difference. Now again, if you didn't notice it, up here in the top left, you'll now see those two icons that I picked. This will let me switch between my weights as we go. Now because I duplicated it, it kept all the same measurements. If I wanted those things to be a little bit different, so my sans serif is looking like this, my serif, I'm actually gonna give it just a hair more on its ascender, and also on its descender, but the rest of it I'm going to leave the same. I only changed my overshoot just thinking about what a serif might do to change my letter forms. So just like that we've set up our masters. Some people might prefer to set up their entire font family thinking about how many variations or combinations they have, and other people might want to just design the whole font font start to finish in one weight and then go back and set up more masters for each corresponding weight. Whatever working method is best for you, I encourage you to do that. Sometimes when we're designing our first fonts, it can be overwhelming to think about how many times we're going to have to draw the lowercase a in bold and regular and light, so it's really helpful just to design in one master first. Then go back and change and iterate based off of what other masters you might want to grow your font into. Thanks again for liking the video as always. Please make sure you're subscribed and that you like the video so we can keep pushing these forward. If you've already done that, share them, comment on them, just spread the design love everywhere.